So here's our destination for Green Bay. So here's our hotel for Green Bay, uh, the lovely Motel 6, um, official motel of traveling punkers. It's the shits, but... I'll meet you west of the east and east of the Fox tonight! West of the east and east of the river I'm right!
I named this last one Nobody. So, a uh, couple pieces of business to take care of. First of all, it has been 43 years since the four of us have played together.
we honest? That's what we do. I, I've been bedridden all week, which is no excuse because I am rocking you right now. But I'm in a loopy dream state right now, and this is fucking far out. I cannot lie. This is, I'm gonna probably wake up in the middle of the night and we did, we did play, right? Did you play that show? That's cool? Okay. Hey, what was this? Hey, that's his wife, too. What, what is this? I bet you it's super weird in a dream state, man. That shit's gotta be real weird.
Why do a monologue? But the first part of that word is mono, meaning one, and I'm in Reverend Norb's turf. So I'm gonna yield my time, but I'm just gonna say this. The only reason we're here is to be car rock harbingers, a four on the floor, John the Baptist, so to speak. Because after we're done doing our thing, you know who's next. I'm talking about Earth's greatest rocker and company. I'm talking about the weak Pegasus of rock and roll. I'm talking about the eight technical poker machine. Boris, the son of a bitching Riddler. So, if you want to get ready for them right now, you put your hand above your head and have a good goddamn time. And then you're going to tell them to stay. It's only a four point drop, but I do what I can. Yeah.
that this is a love song. Unlike all of our other songs, this is a love song. Are doing shows again? That first one in here. That's rad. The song's up and out in that Reverend Gordon cover on tour. Up or not? It's. It's been. It's been. It has been. It has been. It's been some time, and I don't know what to do with myself these days. Cause you're out there, and I'm lonely. I swear that I need you here and now. I still dream of you at night, and wake up to your good vibes.
2016, there's been really nothing but bad news in America. Nothing but one freaking gut punch after another. Right when you think you get the village idiot deposed, you wind up with some sort of freaking war, then you think you got the war kind of tamped down, and then there's like this bullshit that went on yesterday that NATO, NATO calls already covered, and you know, in long detail and so on and so forth. So it just sort of seems like for the last five or six years, there's been nothing but negativity, nothing but bad news, nothing but yet another sort of sledgehammer blow to the testicles and or ovaries. One jacked up occurrence after another. However, I am here to bring you a small ray of hope. One small cover of opportunity. One light in the darkness of insanity. The good news is, technically we're not a Nashwabanon! never particularly important to Morris and Springer, but I will be goddamn if we are playing in the same town as the fucking Trump store. With that said, all I got remaining to say is, ladies and gentlemen, Boris the Sprinkler.
change, wardrobe change. I'm having a wardrobe malfunction. Somebody talking, I'm using the root. Just kidding. Anyway, tonight, tonight my friends, we are all experiencing the same thing. We are all experiencing the same temperature in the room. It is 23 degrees Celsius tonight in here. Thank you very much. 23 degrees Celsius sounds somewhat half-assed. But we raise it to 24. So anyway, for those who are less discerning in the crowd, this is not the original actual bona fide antler helmet. The answer is, oh wait, yeah. why is it, aren't you wearing the actual Anishigash bona fide genuine antler helmet? You ask, you ask this question. Okay, you guys don't go to church much, you don't know much about speaking in unison, that's alright. I look into this. The reason I am not wearing the actual bona fide antler helmet is because for the next five years, the actual mystic sacred antler helmet is going to be property of the Punk Rock Museum, which is supposed to open in Nevada of Las Vegas this year. Along with all kinds of cool shit by like Kevin's bass guitar and a bunch of other crap I can't think of. Unless, of course, this is all just a crazy scheme to embezzle, you know, antler helmets and Kevin's bases left and right, and this guy's just gonna run off to some country with a non-extradition treaty to the United States. This helmet was actually donated for the night by Sean Murray. Thank you, Sean, wherever you are. Although Sean Murray is from Sheboygan, he's not in the Lake Hounds, but like the Lake Hounds, he does rock as hard as the Human Torch's diarrhea. So, more questions, and I have answers. I'm asking questions you didn't even know you needed to know. I think. You're saying, Reverend Orb, where the heck did you get the antler helmet in the first place? Don't say it in unison, you guys suck at doing that. Except when you go, hey, then you're good. It was actually given to me by the WAPL morning man, Rick McNeil and Len Nelson, who, no matter what you think of WAPL, these guys are pretty alright. And this is a long time ago they gave it to me, because apparently they had a contest where you were supposed to bring in the weirdest object you could find, and the weirdest one they were going to petition NASA to put on the next space shuttle. And uh, the weird thing is, that helmet didn't win. It was not the weirdest object, so I don't know what the hell the weirdest object was. I don't even want to contemplate it, but uh, as you may or may not know, uh, a year or something ago, Len Nelson lost his job, he'd been working there for a million years at WAPL, because on his own personal Facebook page, he said the world was better off without Rush Limbaugh. It's like, well, no fucking shit! That's like a no shit moment. That's not a moment where you clutch your pearls and go, oh my goodness, how could he say such a thing? Is that like saying kill the Ramones and probably Joy Ramone for fuck's sake? I mean, give me a break. So anyway, I don't know. So anyway, Len Nelson got canceled by uptight conservative types. So since Len is no longer part of, uh, well, maybe he is, maybe I'm fucking up his chances to get his job back by yapping my mouth off so long. Anyway, I don't know. In honor of Len Nelson, I'd like to dedicate this song to him. It's called, My Radio Is Telling Me To Kill All The Parentheses. No, wait. My Radio Is Telling Me To Lick All The Parentheses. The guys on my radio close parentheses. <laughs>
excuse me, Mr. K, sir, if you could turn down whatever great artist that was that was just playing the breeze. See, guys, I hear all across the sprinkler. I can't hear you. Do you guys want to hear all across the sprinkler? Seriously, do you want to hear more? Sorry, Rick, I'm stealing your mic stand. Um, also, I have done, I, I, I'm stalling for time here because we're old and just about dead. Because when we started playing, we were like in our late 20s, middle 20s, or wherever we were, and the people that liked us were teenagers. And now you freaking ex teenagers are all like 40. So uh, I don't want to say how old we are, but we remain older than you. So I'm not sure how many bullets you have in the old gun. If I crop that of a heart attack on stage, I don't actually that'll be kind of rad. Fuck it. That's right. That guy, that guy from what is that guy's name? Hey, Dick, Dick, Dick Stang. Dick. That guy from from uh, it's a man that 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 world is like David, David. Do you hear bells? He's a, his girlfriend is dancing to the Ice Cream Man by the Shirelles. All right, fuck that. You guys don't get the reference. I don't blame you. The movie was from 1963. All right. We're just gonna play an easy one. However, it involves signs. This one is off our latest record, and it is written by Mr. Rick Six. He's a lyrical genius. Anyway, the song is called Pillow. Somebody's touching me in the back. They're talking behind my back now. I think I might be getting kicked out of the band due to inadequate performance. By the way, I believe you left your Erg CD at the merch stand. You know why? Because you're not paying attention to me when I'm telling you that you left your art CD at the merch stand. Erica, you left your art CD at the merch stand. And I wrote your name on it. Yeah, wear your hat. What, what does your hat say? Is it something? It's some sort of j -Wild crap? Let's see. No, because you have the label on it. Haunted the museum downtown Las Vegas. All right. I hate it because you have the label still on it. I gotta figure this out. Anyway. The song's called Bippy, and it is another, it's another song where I try, try to camouflage my lack of talent with props. There are very few words in this song. If you'd like to sing along, you could probably, actually you probably can't go this weird. Fuck it, just play it. I'm, I'm wasting everybody's time on these beautiful people here. Oh, we have to, and we have to do the thing where we face in one direction or the other direction. We didn't exactly practice this. Rick couldn't practice because he was on the freaking railway or airway in, in LaGuardia or whatever they are. So. Oh, 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 oh,
should have told like the last verse and chaos emerges. What the hell else are we gonna play? What did we know? We play just about every damn song we know. Lunch? Can we do lunch? You got any suggestions? Energy Bob, Energy Bob is here. You know that? Well, they want the heart of a heart and see it. Energy Bob at the main of Quinn. Drop me down with class of words and spur Bob. He's Holly, she's his judge, she's one of those would be guys who can't get butter to get to the right of Energy Bob Toad. Bo 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 bo, catch up his truck, bo 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 bo, then he must be bo bo bo. Hey, what's this sticky jump? I don't let me know when I do this with you. Well, I've got nothing to be afraid. Yeah, I'll take a verse. He, he's hard and cheers, I said that one. We're skipping over the second verse, that verse up. Bo 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 bo, hey, what's this man's bo 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 bo, we're smoking in it, bo 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 bo, to be the badge. He's energy bomb, he drove down the middle, he's a robot, he'll not do it, energy bomb, all about food. Got a truck that's through the middle, so this is the second verse of the way. Oshkosh, Dino, or Green Bay, oh, he'll get the flu, it's through the mail. Energy bomb's the right stop for the job, oh, oh, my love. Energy bomb's the right stop for the job, oh, oh, my love. Energy bomb's the right stop for the job. That's some lunch. Have you made lunch for me lately? Second ending song. You know what I want to thank? I want to thank Paul number one because he fucking made this show happen. He willed it into existence. He told me he wanted to end his big show. I'm like, fuck you, Paul. You're fucking nuts. Nobody wants to come see us. All these people have moved on with their lives. They want to watch major streaming services at home. Paul number one made it happen. Of course, Tom Johnson also made it happen. I believe there's one more person involved. Alright, we're here with Time Bomb Tom. If you've uh, ever read, oh, <laughs> fire truck's going by. 
If you've uh, read Reverend Norb's column in Maximum Rock and Roll back in the day, you've probably heard of this man. <laughs> um, but these days you uh, work at the exclusive company, a record store here in Green Bay that's kind of an institution, uh, but it's closing down. How long have you worked here? I started here in August of 1988. Holy shit. <laughs> and um, it, it's like a local chain, is yeah, it? Yeah, it was just a Wisconsin-based chain. Um, when uh, when the decision was pull, to made to pull the plug in the chain, we had seven stores. At our peak, we had 11. Our owner, Mr. GM Betty, passed away last November. And at the beginning of this year, they this family who inherited it made the decision that they didn't want to deal with it more so they, they felt like it couldn't go on without them and and there's many ways like that is correct and that was their wishes so they decided to just get rid of the chain and here we are almost <laughs> at the end of our liquidation sale only six more days and then we'll be <laughs> closed for good on july 2nd uh, so uh so yeah it's been a i had a really good run here i can't really complain everyone's like oh it's so sad and stuff like i am so fortunate to work in the same record store in the same city in the same location for 34 years <laughs> and like i don't know how many you know about i don't know about 27 27 of them as manager i mean oh yeah <laughs> it's just like you know what i mean i had an owner that was very backing of what we did in the store and you know all jobs have their pros and cons and <laughs> trust me like it's not all peaches and cream working in a record store but i love doing it and uh but you know what i'm to do it this long, I think I'm ahead of the game, you know what I mean? Nice. So, it's all good. We're having, trying to have as much fun as we can as we go away, and we've been taking down a lot of our old posters and flyers and find flyers that we had covered up, and so it's, it's actually been a lot of fun. It's been like a kind of like an archaeological dig of music in Green Bay, so. That's cool. So you guys uh, carry a lot of punk rock stuff, and you're kind of an institution in Green Bay. Um, are all the stores like this, or is this the Time Bomb Tom stamp on this one? Uh, well, the store definitely has my imprints all over it, and you know, <laughs> probably a lot of my DNA through my hair shedding all over the place. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, like that's the that was the great thing about the exclusive company. Like all the stores kind of took on the personality of their staff. Yeah. And yeah, over the years, I'd have like people like come in like, oh, we're from this city, and like we like your exclusive company better because you stock like the Jesus Lizard or something like that, you know what I mean? And uh, But then again, I'm sure in some stores, they, someone might prefer that store better than ours because, you know, we're not stocking that. So yeah. that's kind of a cool thing if you just travel to all the stores, you got different flavors and tastes because we all kind of like try to do it around our city. But also, I think a lot of the, myself, or at least myself, we try to kind of like force music on people too by what we carried and suggested like i have people come up to me recently like oh in the 80s you made me buy the cassette by the hangman from la and thank you that that record's really great and uh so like it's it's fun like i remember we used to push like sweet baby here you know what i mean it's just like it's fun going we just discovered the band we love them you should too you know what I mean? so, that's cool so you got a bunch of bands playing outside today. Um, I don't know if that's uh, just for the kind of closing down, or did you do that on a regular basis? Uh, we or? did do it on a regular basis. Um, during the pandemic, we didn't for a while. We did we did one last year. Kepi Gooley played behind the store on Labor Day. Oh, nice. And that was a lot of fun. That was a good time. Kepi brought it. And uh, But the year before and the year before that, like. Or wait, no. In 20, we didn't do anything. We did the one thing in 21. Yeah. But we used to do it, like, probably about three or four, maybe five times a year. We used to try to do it in the summer. Nice. Try to shoot for when it was dry out. Yeah. <laughs> we used to not really want to bring them inside because we have, a, like, a lot of older customers, too, and, like, they may not like this blasting rock while they're trying to shop. But, <laughs> but of course, today, if we would have had bad weather, I would have had no problem bringing it in because, like, and hey, what are you going to do, not shop here again? We're going out to sit in, like, right? like, sorry. <laughs> like, you know, like, uh, so yeah, so uh, yeah, like, and I'm excited about the lineup because Lion Slicer, who have been kind of a, 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 um, a mainstay of the Green Bay music scene for a long time, they're kind of like a metal, hardcore, punk rock, 
they're doing their farewell show, and I was very oh, honored wow. that they said they want to do it at our last waltz. Nice. And, uh, and then TV, of course, is the auxiliary Boris the Sprinkler, with, you know, <laughs> the original rhythm section of Ron Kispert and Eric Lee. Wow. Their last guitarist, Aaron Simon, and, of course, the Reverend Norb. Holly and the Nice Lions, are one of, actually, another one of Green Bay's, lo like, long-standing original music bands. In fact, besides Fun with Adams and Beach Troll, I can't really think of any other bands that have been playing original music in Green Bay as long as that band has. Wow. And Holly works here. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and then the Smart Shoppers, you know, Joe Lambert and Aaron and the Reverend Norb and the drummer who I can't think of his name right now and I feel really bad about that. Number one. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. And May is a former Green Bay resident who just wanted to be involved in this last show. So we nice. said, yeah. Um, HBJO is Hugh Blanc's Joyless Ones in Disguise because they're going to be out with one of their main members, Ted. So this is going as HBJO, but the coolest thing is Jordan Davis of the Mystery Girls and Space Rap is playing with them. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's going to be really great. Spencer Schmidt is a really new up and coming band in the town. And Shithole, which may have just ended, really good hardcore. And then an uh, up and coming band from Green Bay called Ditch the Hubcat, who the drummer, who is a really good customer here, opened the show. She was amazing. I, I didn't even know it was a girl until the end. I was like, just thinking the whole time, God, that drummer's good. <laughs> so, uh, you've been promoting shows here in town for how long? Uh, since 1986, I did my first show, but I didn't quite started doing them on a regular basis more until 88. Oh, I did wow. one show in 86 with some friends, and then I didn't start doing them in 88 till when this bar we had called Lefty's Closed, and they <laughs> kind of were the only bar that booked underground kind of stuff yeah so this is really weird but i used to rent a vfw to do 21 and over shows oh yeah to get that crowd out but the coolest thing is if you're in the punk scene we let you in anyways oh, yeah, nice. and, the guy the, the marv the guy who ran the vfw who actually was in the store here the other day um he never caught on what i was doing he just assumed i was carting everyone at the door like no i wasn't <laughs> So, like comes so that out was now. a lot of fun because it was like the coolest of two scenes inter intermingling. intermingling. Nice. So that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, what would you say is the favorite show you've ever booked? Oh my gosh, there's so many. I mean, I mean, there's so many. I mean, like you know, you gotta like you gotta always kind of throw it first. The ripoff show in Green Bay oh, in 1995, nice. and then. Um, the Teen Generate show with the New Bomb Turks and Boris <laughs> Sprinkle and the Tantrums, that was another one. Oh my gosh. That first time the Quadrajets played here with Nashville Pussy, that, that's got to be up there. I mean, like, oh my gosh, the Candy Snatchers when they played with AC. I oh, mean, uh, um, the, oh my gosh, the Supernova show. I mean, the first time Man or Astro Man played, or actually any time Man or Astro Man played. <laughs> I mean, the Donna show, I mean, like, um, several shows. yeah, yeah, <laughs> like we got Donna's two times in one weekend the first time they're here, like the Space Shits played twice that night. Oh, nice. Yes, yeah, um, I don't know, there's so many great, the Bolivians, that, you know, that actually might be my favorite show of all time because oh, yeah. only about 20, I think 20 people paid to see that show. We had a whole <laughs> bunch of bands on it because I was trying to like get people to come out. The show went super late. In fact, the only reason the show stopped was because we went to 2 a.m. But the Bolivians <laughs> played an hour and a half straight round oh, wow. robin where they kept like rotating instruments. <laughs> like, Jeremy was at that show. I mean, wasn't that like a religious experience? It was. It when was they did Hill Popper. Yeah. I mean, seriously, like, you know, that one. And then two days earlier, we had the first time the neck bones were ever in Green Bay with the Revelators. So, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, we had a great run. You know, we still get a lot of great bands. And, you know, I mean, I just had a great time at the Weed Eater show here a couple weeks ago with, um, um, oh my gosh, a band from Oakland. Um, oh my gosh, what were they called? Something high, high tone son of a bitch. They're like <laughs> 80s and 70s metal mixed. Oh yeah. And they're super great. You gotta check them out. And then uh, 
uh, Jeff Pincus from the Butthole Surfers opened. It was oh, just wow. him and his banjo with the multimedia show, but he used all these crazy effects on his banjo, and it was really good. Yeah. I was scared at first when I heard it's just him and his banjo. I'm like, <laughs> okay. But it was awesome. Really nice. good. So there's still, you know, I mean, I got to admit, we like, you tend to like go back for nostalgia in the past, talk about greatest shows, but they're still happening. How about last night? Boris the Sprinkler oh went God. fire last night. You know what I mean? Like That entire you know show I mean? was fucking amazing. You know I mean? Every band was great. And the craziest thing is there's so many shows over the years like that are total candidates like funnest show ever and oh my gosh what 85 percent of them bore us around the bill so <laughs> you really gotta mention that nice so, yeah so well thank you yes yes money and the monkey wrench yeah <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh. And Dead Moon, every time Dead Moon played here, I mean, like, <laughs> so cool. Awesome. You, you ready for that tour? Yes. Okay, I gotta quick give them a tour of our clean basement. <laughs> so. well, thank you very much yeah, for no, doing this, you. and thank, thank you. you for your contributions to the Green Bay scene. The thank couple you. times I've been here has uh, been uh, revolving around a show you put on. <laughs> your, <laughs> your 50th birthday and uh last night well thank you for not only being canada's number one film filmographer of great punk rock but being canada's number one wrestling fan right here folks <laughs> so, love your bruiser roadie shirts awesome so, thank you very so, yeah, much you're welcome much here. appreciated yeah, thank you Just sort of grimace wildly. That's what I did when I was playing your bass, possibly breaking it earlier. Make sure none of those hangers blow away. The Supreme Court says we need to reuse those. Are we just going to kind of do this thing or what? All right then. Well, what the hell? We're going to do the thing. This is the thing, and the thing is being done. Thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. And I'd also like to ask you, rhetorically, that life is a system of three questions. You may know this by watching Monty Python under the Holy Grail. Generally, whenever you have to do something, if you have to cross a threshold, if you have to make a, you know, a step to the next level, you have to answer three questions. Means you have to ask three questions. And I assume that you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, would probably be wanting to ask me a number of questions right now. Number one, A, did you break Eric's fucking face? was the last guy who touched it when it was working. I can't say for sure that I broke it. But I'm sure that Carmel will convict me one way or the other. The second question I would imagine is, who the hell are TVA and what are they doing there? Ladies and gentlemen, TVA stands for the Boris Auxiliary. This is not said for TVA now. It's been announced as the Boris Auxiliary. It's not a freaking secret. The Boris Auxiliary is the last lineup of Boris the Sprinkler. We were together from November 2002 until March 2003, and then we broke up, and that was it until we did reunion shows. In this time, we recorded one, you know, 45 for Dirt Nap Records. We were going to release a total of four songs, and that was it. Ladies and gentlemen, to my right, wearing the blue sparkly jacket and wearing the yellow place. A third upon it, which may or may not work because you look at some fuckhead in the start shoppers who play space. That's Eric number one. On the drums, still looking marginally less like Danny Partridge, we have Mr. Ronnie Johnny Kisper. And on guitar, 
guitar, the one, the only, the man that the met the legend, ladies and gentlemen, L.P. Let's just go to your second question. The third question has been more open-ended. Your third question very well may be, ergo and to wit, tiring weekend of rock and roll, full of fiascos and horribleness on the part of forces external to rock and roll, but what you gonna do? Thanks for hanging in there and sticking around to a bitter end on Sunday afternoon. It's better than watching Hee Haw. <laughs> Alright, it might be better than watching Hee Haw. It has the potential to be almost as good as watching Hee Haw. I guess it depends on who the guest is. This is the song we recorded in 2003 that's meant to be released. The reason being, this guy gets a new song. But you got it, you got that big disorder. We'll put the pick up the band on a panic disorder. We tell all the opportunity and you feel like shit. I'm going to a party with this up the red string Yeah, yeah Hey now, hey now, hey now You better turn that TV off Hey now, hey now, hey now You better 
better turn that TV off. You better turn that TV off. You better turn that TV off. Turn that TV off. Ooh. Disorder. I'm going to the cruise with the legs with me. I'm going to a party with the legs with me. Hey now, hey now, hey now, you better turn that TV off. Hey now, hey now, hey now, you better turn that TV off. You gotta turn that TV off. You gotta turn that TV off. Turn that TV off. Turn that TV off. 25 minutes in the motorbike station. I'm going to the This is better than you can do with your hands. Hey now, hey now, hey now, you better turn that TV off. Hey now, hey now, hey now, you better turn that TV off. You gotta turn that TV off. You better turn that TV off. Turn that TV off. Love you, baby. Well, what the hell? Anyway, we have been TBA, the Boris Auxiliary. This is our second and uh, last show, uh, TBA. We formed so we could play the Dirt Nap Festival last, what the hell was it, last Saturday. And we played early enough that, unlike the marked men who played last, we didn't get COVID because the place wasn't full of people screaming for us. Hey. Now they are talking. They're probably giving each other COVID to try to curse and vex me. But anyway, so, uh, I think we got the high sign. Well, as long as both you guys are standing on separate sides of me, I guess that's my cue to go. Um, the popsicles are cool. Uh, if you are drinking, but maybe I don't know what the hell I'm going to say. I'm going to say something about body of Christ, body and blood of Christ, and I'm going to say. Get me into this, get me into this. I don't know how I'm going to start this one. I can't start it the same way I started it last night. Your microphone doesn't work? All right, I got it. Hang on. I didn't realize this, but my, uh, my drink is a prop. What's all? What is this? 100% juice. What kind? God damn it. Give me, give me grape juice. <laughs> Yeah, that does get for the Boris Auxiliary. And you 
know, you're probably wondering how the hell did we ever think to get back together? This idea, I have so many ideas to, is the property of Mr. Eric number one. Eric number one texted me, because people don't call these days. He said, Reverend No, Reverend No, we gotta get the band back together for one great show at Dirt Nap Fest, which Elo get into two shows here at the exclusive company, which of course will be completely missed, blah 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 blah. You all know this. So why you I don't know, whatever. Why belabor the obvious for Trace Six? So I say, alright, Eric says, Ron's in, I'm in. Are you in normal? Like, yeah, I'm in. How are we gonna get LP to join the Boris Auxiliary? You know? Hang on. Don Maybe this is gonna work so well. So anyway, how are we gonna get LP to join the band? He doesn't want to do it. So like LP, what are your list of demands to join the band? LP said, wrestling figures. I want nothing but wrestling figures. So we're like, alright, that's a very reasonable demand. However, the three of us could not assemble enough wrestling figures that LP did not have to make it worth his while. LP said no deal. Like LP, we can't offer you wrestling figures. We can offer you those other two things besides Mountain Dew that take central importance in your life. LP said, oh yeah? Name these two things. Like LP, you're preaching to the choir, man. Those two things that you love more than anything besides wrestling figures and Mountain Dew are drugs and masturbation. And I don't know how we're going to deliver masturbation to you, and I'm pretty sketchy on the drugs myself. But God golly, help would have the hard ones with the hard ones. If LP wants drugs and masturbation, that's what LP's going to get. Other people might not cut such a deal for such a rock titan as LP. But then again, those other people are not like me, and I don't think they're very funny. But this is not enough. But just don't know this is enough. It won't be a match of the six and months. So you can tell me. I'm just a young man. I'm talking out for the world. Don't you think I'm a little bit more than a soldier? Don't be a fool. 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 from Boris the Sprinkler. Uh, can you identify yourselves as which one's one and two? One. Number two. Now, Paul number two, what's with this ranking system? Do you feel junior to Paul number one all the time? That's fine. I'm not comfortable with being number one. That's right. Number two. <laughs> Just less pressure, right? I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so you guys did your 30th anniversary show last night. Uh, what would you think of that? Awesome. show the night before didn't go exactly as planned in Chicago. What happened there? Uh, there was a open case. Right? We helped as much as we could to get what, what the promoter needed us to do. So, with the roll, you roll. That man was Apocalypse Hoboken. Yeah, good yeah. guys. Good guys. Yep. Had to pull out, unfortunately. Yeah, they were, they were I know that. Sure. <laughs> you guys just recently put out 
out a, a new record. Is that like, uh, did you? <laughs> Well, yeah, that's recent yeah. for yeah. <laughs> since so, since I was last year. So, yeah, so then, yeah, that it was interesting the way we came up with the song. Are they all new songs? They're all new originals, and we 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 couldn't really practice them together because Rick lives on the East Coast and he's in Northern Wisconsin, and on the other side of Northern Wisconsin, and uh, we did everything through sound files and emails and just cast music files around and we put all the songs beforehand, and then we showed up in the studio. And planning on doing any more records or is that just kind of a one-off? Uh, maybe. We'll <laughs> there is a, a compilation coming out, but uh, it's maybe with a capital B. Yeah. There's a compilation coming out for sure, but maybe is a, anything new. It would be probably a while. <laughs> nice. I won't tell. Yeah. More shows? Uh, we'll see. We'll see what I can rip the guys into. We'll see what the next 30 <laughs> years brings. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, Thank you so much for uh, doing these shows again because you guys never came to Canada back in the day. Yeah. And yeah, I had to come to Green Bay to see you. 30 years from now, people be calling this back in the day. <laughs> That's right. So. <laughs> yeah. so. All right, thank you guys very much. Thank you, Rick. Hope to see you again. Yeah, right, <laughs> okay, we're here with Reverend Norb from uh, Boris the Sprinkler. <laughs> Congratulations on your 30th anniversary. Thank you. I'm now 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think the show went last night? I think the show was in its prime of its sexual health at 30 years old. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I think the show went tremendously. I had a wonderful time. Uh, I'm speechless at the turnout and how wonderful everybody was. It was spectacular and it was great. Blah, 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 blah. You should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> the people watching at home. Yeah, I was there. Still. Oh, yeah. You can the book. Future for uh, Boris. You have a few in the last couple of years and Maximum rock and roll back in the day. Yes. <laughs> and if they don't, oh. here's photographic evidence that it exists. <laughs> the book of all your articles. In very small type. And where can people get that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> they I have think to meet I saw you. It on but I can't remember. I think I do. Yes, BorisTheSprinkler.com. There you are. <laughs> Live it, know it. Nice. So, uh, did you start writing for Maximum before or after Boris started? I can't remember. Uh, was after Boris started. 30th anniversary of the book and 30th and a half was like that. And I started to write the next rock roll in 1994. Nice. So, uh, how did you get involved with them? Um, well, I had actually been putting out a fanzine longer than Maximum Rock and Roll. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I put out a fanzine called 16, and I they sent me their first issue where we traded zines back and forth because that's what you did back in the day. So I was always sort of in their orbit and at one point in time, I think I had like an art exhibit. I've had very few art exhibits, but I had an art exhibit and I had these, they, there were these fancy postcards made up and I thought they were cool. So I just sent them out to people that I thought I would like to impress with my fancy cool, you know, punk rock art exhibit. And one of the people was Tim Yohannan because, I don't know, we always sent each other things or whatever. And he said, oh, well, you know, this, uh, this car, like, I'm doing the Jelly Biafra voice, but just pretend <laughs> to Tim Yohannan voice. Eh, no, 
Um, he said, well, okay, this, this card makes me think that you should, we should probably do a piece on you because people don't remember who you are. Nobody knows who you are. You're a virtual non-entity, but you know, people used to know you or whatever, whatever it was. So I, he wanted me to do like an article on myself, but do it in the style of my own fanzine, 16. So I did like this crazy seven page thing and it was all cut up and weird and pictures and <laughs> word balloons with sassy remarks coming out of people's mouths and stuff. And uh, that tickled his funny bone so much that he said, you should write a regular column. And so I did. <laughs> nice. And then when Tim died, I was, I was excommunicated from the church back to not that long after. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. So, uh, how many issues did you do? Because I always gave them completely ridiculous numbers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, the Boris the Sprinkler albums were all uh, released on Bulge. Is that your label? Bulge was my label, uh, Suck and Boris is Gay were released on Gold Card Records from New York City. Nice. And the newer one, Vespa de Venus, is released on Beer City Records from Milwaukee because releasing stuff is such a pain these days. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so why did you decide to release stuff on your own back in the day? That we were sick of waiting for like the white knight to come in on a, tra you know, on a, a steed and rescue us. We we're sick <laughs> of sort of waiting for some mystic magical gatekeeper like, you know, the Guru Randall Goat or whatever to you know, notice us and, and go, oh my goodness, please ascend to the throne and so on and so forth. <laughs> and it, when you're in band and you just start, you know, you think you're going to, I'm going to record this great album, we're going to send it out to these labels and the labels are going to go, oh, this is the best record I ever heard in my life. Sign these guys immediately and then you're going to go on tour and you're going to be famous. Girls are going to be all over you and whatever the hell. You're going to be like in the club, man. But um, <laughs> if you do that, odds are really good that you're going to spend the rest of your life waiting for that magical poets to part moment and somebody to come in and your ship to come in and somebody's going to put out your record for you and make you, you know, big and famous. And <laughs> eventually we realized it probably wasn't in the cards and we didn't feel like waiting any longer to have it be in the cards. So I just said, oh, fuck it, I'm going to put it on myself. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, back in the 90s, you did the end of the century uh, cover, full cover album. And yes, I was so happy to see that you had the CD. I've had the vinyl forever, and I always wanted to play that in my car, and thankfully now I can. It's weird because this very record store that uh, the Smart Shoppers and the Boris Auxiliary are going to be playing outside today, uh, this is where I got the CD from. They found, they're going out of business, but this week, and uh, the manager, which is my Bob Tom, who is a song on our first record, uh, he found a box of these Boris CDs that were just sitting in the storeroom somewhere. <laughs> nice. Well, so I, I thank you for that. But I mean, I haven't had them in 15 years. Time Bomb Tom. Honestly, there's a lot of reasons why he was Time Bomb Tom, and the one I don't think I should go into, but what it really was, way back in the first he was in Wisconsin, and Tom had a radio show. And Tom had to have a guest at his radio show, like every week, to do this little spot where I would have the Rock and Reverence triple feature, where I would play the three songs of the week that I thought were especially cool. And I sort of grew up on Marvel Comics of like the Stan Lee era and stuff like that, and everything had alliteration in it, so everybody was like, Smile and Stanley and Jolly Jack Kirby and Rascally Roy Thomas and things like that. <laughs> and I just laughed at the DJ voice and started calling him, Well, I'll tell you one goddamn thing about it, Time Bomb Tom, and it, it just came out. <laughs> it's really shooting through his personality, but it honestly was something I have to say on the radio. Nice. It's been Time Bomb Tom forevermore. <laughs> Screeching, he told me there was that whole thing. 
incident. Oh, was that the, the on stage fight? Yes. Oh my god. He, he was one of the guys that jumped ship. So oh, he's a super talented dude. He's got this two piece band called Drew now, which is really cool. And he's he's a music teacher in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, which is where the from. That, guy, that dude is freaking flat out amazing. That guy, that, that guy lives, breathes, and I don't know, sweats rock and roll and music in general. <laughs> my hat's off to him, but I'm not wearing a hat. <laughs> so you're playing with the smart shoppers today. What about Trevor Norman the Onions? Is that still going on? That is not really going on. The Onions are still a band. They were a band before I joined, which is the uh -huh. Norman the Onions because they figured, well, when we got the four plays, I'll still be Trevor Norman. And, still be the <laughs> and, so forth. and that is the case now. Once in a while, they'll play in town and I'll go up and sing like half a set with them or something. Oh, nice. We're not, we're not a band as such. Cool. Well, I hope to keep hearing more new stuff from you in the future. That's what and you think now. <laughs> you never know. Well, I hope to return to Green Bay and see you guys in some way, shape, or form again. Awesome. I think I have to go play now. All right, Oops. well, take care. Doodle, 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 whatever the hell it is. <laughs> In case you didn't notice, in case you were not from here, in case you're from like, you know. How many people are from further away than Ottawa? North Carolina! Well, excuse me, further away than Hamilton, Ontario. <laughs> you're further away from the Hamilton, Ontario? <laughs> Equal? <laughs> well, well, what's closer, North Carolina or Hamilton, Ontario? You could be right. All right, well, sir, you win. I don't know where the hell it's going with that. I really thought the guy from Ottawa was, you know, a slam dunk. Punk Rick's videos, but never mind that. <laughs>